Hello, this is Joe Savage from DevHQ.net, and today we're diving into a Lua tutorial about if statements. So I think we've pondered this before, but wouldn't it be really, really useful if you could get some input from the user via io.read and then do different things depending on what they inputted? Now, this kind of conditional branching is, of course, possible in Lua and most programming languages, and it's accomplished through things called if statements. So if statements are generally written uh, through writing the if keyword, and then a condition, and then the then keyword, and then some code you want to be executed if the condition is true, and then the end keyword. So in this case, what's going to happen is if this condition ends up being true, then this code is going to be executed, and if it is not true, then we're just going to skip over this code and we're not going to execute that. So the condition in itself can actually be anything that evaluates to a true or false value. So we could write uh, something like you know variable equals true, and then if variable, whoops, if a variable then execute this piece of code and that's going to go okay well variable is true so if true then do this and it's going to go okay well is the condition true true of course it is true is always true thus it's going to execute this piece of code so you could say something like print hello and this is always going to print hello because the condition is true which will always be true but of course we can formulate more useful conditions and these are generally done through the use of two values and a conditional operator to compare these so let's just actually come up with an example for this. Let's go io.write and your name. And then let's go ahead and say name equals io.read. And let's try and formulate a condition to say, okay, if the name they entered is Joe, then we'll output a special message to them to be like, hey, you made this program probably, or you're some other guy called Joe. You have the same name as the guy that made this program. We probably won't make the message that long, but there we go. So to formulate the condition, let's formulate it in our heads first. So what we want to happen is we want name to be exactly equal to the string Joe. So we can do that through use of the is equal to conditional operator. So we write the first value that we want to be involved in the comparison, so name, then the conditional operator. So what we actually want to check, so we want to check equality, so we use the is equal to conditional operator, which is just expressed via a double equal sign like that. And then the string we want to compare it to, so in this case, Joe. So this condition will return true, if name is equal to this string, Joe, and false if it is not. So we can actually test that out. We can print this, and it will print true if the name entered is equal to Joe and false otherwise. So if we just test this, Joe, true, Bob, false. OK, it works. So let's actually bring back our if statement. Let's use the condition in here. So now this piece of code here will be executed whenever the name they entered equals Joe. So we can print something like, hello, master, when they enter the name Joe. So we can test that out. We do this, enter your name Joe. Hello master. Do it again, enter your name Bob. Oh, Bob doesn't get a message. So that works as we'd expect it, but it's you know it's kind of bumming me out that Bob doesn't get a message. Surely he should get something that at least says, you know, you're not the master or just hello. Um, so how can we do that? Well, the first thing we could do is we can go ahead and we can write another if statement and say, okay, if the name does not equal Joe, because does not equal is another comparison operator. So we can do that via tilde equals, just like that. So that says if name doesn't equal Joe, then just print hello, and that will work. We can save and try that. And if you enter Bob, it says hello. And if you enter Joe, it's still the first thing. Uh, however, this isn't really very efficient, because if the program's already done the comparison to check if the name equals Joe, then surely it should sort of know uh, when the name doesn't equal Joe. We shouldn't have to compare the name to Joe again. So what we can actually do is we can sort of bind these together. So we can just write a thing called else. So what this actually does is it says, OK, if this condition is true, if the name is equal to Joe, then do this. Otherwise, go ahead and execute this portion of code. So if we save that, that should work exactly the same as previous. So Joe still works, and Bob just says hello. So that works as we'd expect. But then what if we want to have another special message for Bob? Because we can't really. I mean, I suppose we could write another one like this and be like, okay, if the name equals Bob, then, in fact, that wouldn't even, I know what we could do, we could have it in here, so we could say, okay, otherwise, if the name is equal to Bob, then do this, uh, or if the name isn't equal to Bob, then print hello, but that's just a mess, look at this, this is a mess, so let's just go ahead and control Z out of that, let's, we don't even want to go there. What we want to do instead is we really want to go, okay, if their name is Joe, then do this. Otherwise, if their name is Bob, then do this. Otherwise, 
do this. And we can do this through the else if keyword. So we can say else if name equals equals Bob, then let's just fix the indentation, then print, hey Bob, what's up? So what this does is just as we described, if this condition is true, it will execute this piece of code and then go down to execution down here. Otherwise, if this isn't true, then it will check this condition. And if that is true, it will execute this piece of code. And if it wasn't true, then it will go to the else and go, OK, then we'll execute this piece of code. And then uh, again, it's going to go but down to execution uh, down here. Now, of course, we don't have to include the else. We can take that out. Uh, and that will work as expected. And you can daisy chain these else ifs as much as you want. So we can add another condition, go, OK, else if their name is equal to James, then print, hello, James, how are you today, or something like that. And that will work uh, as you'd expect. And we can just quickly test that. So James, Bob, and Joe, and someone who isn't those. And it all works as we'd expected. And this is pretty much the core of the if, else, if, else block. That you can do different things depending on certain conditions. And this is obviously extremely powerful. Uh, and this is just an entry level example to it. But even this, you should be able to see some use in, I'm sure. So we talked about different comparison operators. Let's just quickly go through those. So we've been through is equal to. So if A is equal to B. Uh, we've been through does not equal or is not equal to. So if A is not equal to B then that will return true. Uh, we also have greater than, if A is greater than B, if A is less than B, if A is greater than or equal to B, and if A is less than or equal to B. So those should all be very self-explanatory, really. Uh, and I recommend just writing little programs to play around the different conditional operators and do certain things in certain situations, because that really is the power of if statements. So if we just write a very quick example to deal with numbers and then finish up with this tutorial. So if we just go ahead and we say io.write, enter a number. And then we go ahead and say input equals io.read. Now, the thing is, we want to do some if statements that involve less than and greater than because that's really helpful with numbers. However, io.read is going to get the input in the form of a string. So what we can actually do is we can use a function called toNumber, which will just convert the string into a number so we can then do number operations with it. So we can mess about with it like it's a number, use greater than and less than, and greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, and they'll work properly rather than it going, what do you mean this, this, you know, this string or, for example, the string could just be the letter A. What do you mean A is greater than 5? I don't understand what that means. Instead, it will have a string that's related to a number, and it'll go, OK, uh, the toNumber function will just go ahead and go, Hmm, this looks like the number 52 to me. So we'll convert it into a number and then we can deal with it properly. But that was a slight aside, but let's just go ahead and wrap this in to number. So we actually convert that to a real number. And then we can go ahead and write our if statements. So if input is less than zero, we print ah, negative number, good choice. Um, otherwise, else if, uh, whoops, I forgot my then there. So if input is less than zero, then ha, negative number good choice. Otherwise, if input is greater than 9999, then uh, let's output g's that number is large. Otherwise, what other situation can we have here? Let's just have an else. Otherwise, go ahead and print meh, pretty boring number. And that should really do what you expect. So again, let's run this. And it should do different things depending on the input. So if we enter the number 5, eh, it's not very impressed. If we enter the number a bunch of 9s, it's going to go, geez, that number is large. And if we enter a negative number, then it's going to go, hey, a negative number, that's a good choice. So that really is the core of if statements. I really do suggest writing your own little scripts to play around with writing different conditions and different comparison operators and just getting used to the whole form of the if, else if, end, all the thens, making sure you use the end. Um, and that really is all there is. So if you want more information about anything I've talked about in this tutorial, if you're viewing on YouTube, the related text tutorial is in this video's description. Or if you're viewing on the website, the related text tutorial is just below where this video is embedded. That is all I have to say in this video, and have a nice day.